I've been working with web proxies for over 25 years. Proxy auto configuration files, also known as PAC files and sometimes WPAD.dat files, are snippets of JavaScript code that inform a web browser how to direct traffic to your proxies, mostly for content filtering purposes in enterprises. Although writing the JavaScript for PAC files is not inherently difficult, and there are a lot of examples on the internet, I've always found it frustrating to debug the scripts when something goes wrong. The browsers themselves don't report errors when they occur, and sometimes you get unexpected results from a PAC file because you didn't take something into account. To add to the frustration, most of the tools I've found to analyze and debug PAC files are cumbersome to use, mostly consisting of embedding alert statements within the JavaScript or using some sort of CLI tool to parse it. After thinking about it for some time, I decided to write my own tool that allows me to rapidly edit and parse and analyze PAC files and publish it on GitHub for you. I call it Proxy Auto Configuration Debugger, and I'd like to demonstrate its use. I'm not going to go into the intricacies of how PAC files work or are deployed because there are a lot of references if you web search for them but I will go over a few examples of some simple use cases to demonstrate the operation of the tool. I hope you find it useful. My Proxy Auto Configuration Debugger is a Windows C Sharp .NET Framework desktop application that should run natively on Windows 10 or 11 and has its source and binaries posted to GitHub at the link below. There's some basic information in the readme as well as some interesting things to know, but it's not entirely too well documented because I really just wrote it for myself. You can download the entire project if you want to peruse the source code, and the binaries are located in the EXE folder. I've included both a Windows Setup MSI package and a standalone archive file that you can just unzip and run the EXE file. Let's discuss the environment I'm using for demonstration. Here's a diagram of how this lab is set up. We have a web server here that is hosting the PAC file. The browsers are reading the file from this URL. I have two proxies set up, Proxy1 and Proxy2. Both of these proxies block all requests to them and display a page which identifies what proxy is being used. The PAC file itself decides which proxy to send the request to or go direct to the internet. I'm using two workstations, Windows 10 and Windows 11, as the clients. The proxy settings in Windows are pointing to the wpad.dat file hosted on the server. Let's test the operation of the program and look at the way it works. When you first launch it, an example pack file is loaded. The left pane is the editor where you can make modifications to your file. The right pane is for the results of the evaluated pack file when you test it. The top text box allows for the entry of the URL used for testing, and this text box has a history that you can select from. Let me zoom each panel to make the text larger with the control mouse wheel. This pack file is very simple. The first condition looks if the URL contains only a host name and returns direct so the request isn't proxied. The second condition looks to see if the host is in a couple of specific domains and returns direct if it is. The third condition compares the host's IP address against a few internal network subnet ranges and also returns direct if it is. Finally, as a catch-all, everything else is proxied to Proxy1. Let's see how this works. When you enter a URL and press the test button, the code is evaluated. Let's test a plain host name and see what it does. The results pane traces the execution of the code, displays various messages of the built-in functions, and displays their outcome. We see the results of the isPlainHostName function as true, and direct is returned. The return value is also displayed at the top. 
An execution timer displays the amount of time it took to finish. Let's try another example. I'll enter www.mydomain.com, which I don't want to go through a proxy, and test. You can see it tests the first condition and returned false. And went through the domain conditions, hit the mydomain.com parameter, and returned true, thus returning direct to the browser. Now let's try an IP address. When you test it, we're looking for it to reach the is in net section. It walks through the plain host name section, and then it walks through the domain name section. It reaches the IP address section, checks through the list of subnets to see if the address is in a specific range, and here you can see it is true, and it returns direct and doesn't get proxied. Finally, let's try an internet URL. When it evaluates the URL, you can see it skips past all of the previous statements as the conditions are all false, and returns the final catch all proxy the traffic is supposed to be sent to. Now let's save it and see how it works. I'm going to save it to the wpad.dat file hosted on the web server. When I open a web browser and go to a URL, you can see the traffic was sent to proxy1 and was blocked, because all traffic through it is blocked for testing. Now let's walk through a slightly more advanced example. Here's a pack file that finds the client's IP address, does some parsing, and selects the proxy based on if the last octet is even or odd. When it's even, it returns proxy 2, and when it's odd, proxy 1 is returned. When I test a URL, you can see in the results that the client's IP address is discovered and ends in an even number, and proxy 2 is returned. But if you want to check a different client address other than the PC you're working on, then the auto IP option at the top can be unchecked and a different address can be replaced in this text box. When you test it, the entered IP address is used instead and the pack file reacts accordingly by returning proxy1. Let's save this file to the web server and see if it works. The Windows 10 PC that I'm using has an even address, and when I go to a site, it shows that I'm using Proxy2 because the address ends in 10. Let's switch to a Windows 11 PC that has an odd address. Now when I go to a site, Proxy1 is being used because the address ends in 11. Now JavaScript can be tricky. And when you're debugging, you might need a way to log messages. The debugger has a function to do just that with the underscore underscore log message function. This is only used in this debugger and must be removed or commented when the pack file is actually used. By using the log message function, you can display contents to the results pane for debugging. Here I'm logging intermediate values used to calculate the even or the odd calculations. When tested, you can see the output here. The message displays the value of IP bits and myseg, and finally, the I am odd message. This is a handy way to track down bugs. Don't forget to remove or comment the log message statements before you deploy your pack file, or it will not work. So, there you go. I hope you liked this brief demonstration of the Proxy Auto Configuration Debugger. If you think it would be useful for you, download it and give it a try. Let me know what you think in the comments below or on GitHub.